There's no better indication to me of the health of the community than what some of the awesome initiatives and contributions that individuals and small teams are making. For the last three months, me and a few others have been working on an event sourcing reference architecture that I am pleased to have uh, call Mike Coleno from Solstice, one of our participants and contributors, up to the stage to tell us a little bit about. Mike, would you come on up? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome. Good morning, Spring One. As Pivotal's Agile Partner of the Year in 2018, Solstice is a digital innovation consulting company that's focused on moving the Fortune 500 into the cloud native era. My role as Solstice CTO is to focus on the evolution of platforms, patterns, and frameworks to allow our customers to move faster than they've ever moved before. As we just heard from StubHub, and as we've heard throughout the week, Pivotal Cloud Foundry continues to be the market-leading cloud-native platform for organizations who understand both the realities and the challenges of living in a multi-cloud world. Let's talk about patterns. Organizations are moving swiftly to distributed, event-driven architectures faster than we've ever seen before. And they're doing so using connected patterns, such as CQRS and event sourcing. Well, where are we seeing this at Solstice? Where is this, where is this actually happening? First, in financial services. The world's largest banks are moving legacy applications and traditional batch processes out in favor of event-driven architectures. In the ag world, the largest agricultural companies in the world are bringing connected IoT use cases that demand a ton of scale as it relates to both events and data. And then finally, in manufacturing, whether it's B2B, B2C, or both, the need for scaling out microservices inside of these architectures is completely driven on the backs of event-driven architects. How is Solstice doing this today? We're doing it on top of PCF. We're doing it on top of these proven patterns. And we're doing it on the backs of Spring. Yet, building these systems is still extremely difficult. And so Solstice, over the last nine months, went on a journey to find a specialized framework that we could leverage to help, build, help us build these systems. And it's helping our developers and we're confident that it'll help you as well. So let's have uh, Allard Boja from Axon Framework, the CTO and founder. He's going to come up here and show us a little bit more about this event sourcing reference architecture and tell you about Axon. Allard, please come up and join us. Good morning. So Axon Framework is a framework that helps developers build what we call evolutionary event-driven microservices. And it does that based on three basic principles. The first being domain-driven design. Domain-driven design is a way to find the bounded context in your, in your domain and build models suited to solve very specific problems in that context, in that domain. Another one is CQRS. CQRS is an architectural pattern where you divide your application into roughly two parts. One part is responsible for handling commands, intends to change your application state. The, the components that handle these commands do validation, and they make decisions on what the side effects will be for those commands. And on the other side, there's the query part, which is focused on delivering information that you might need in a UI, or in, in these uh, decision-making steps. This allows you to create specialized components that take into account the specific non-functional requirements on either side, a very powerful principle. And the other one is event sourcing. Events carry a lot of value, value that does not diminish over time as much as many other requests. So there's a lot of value in these events that you want to store. And with event sourcing, you do not only store them as a side effect of your application running, but they are the source of the state of your application. 
making it a very reliable source of truth. But those are not the most important features of, of Axon. As I said, it's for evolutionary event-driven microservices. And that evolution is very important. Axon Framework gives you the abstractions you need to make components what we call location transparent. Location transparent components communicate with each other without caring about their respective location. It doesn't matter whether they're in the same deployable unit or if you deploy them separately or completely in different data centers across the globe. For these components, it does not matter. That allows you to evolve into a microservices environment over time as, again, these non-functionals change or as your understanding of the domain improves, telling you exactly where you need to cut the boundaries of your microservices. This allows developers to focus on the business logic of an application, the logic that distinguishes you from your competitor. And this is very similar to what, what Pivotal has been doing with PCF. Try to reduce the cognitive burden of developers trying to abstract away a lot of the concerns that you should not really care about. And that's why I'm particularly excited to present a reference architecture that we have been working on in the past months. We have taken the Axon Trader out of its out of the cupboard. We had to dust it off because it was an abandoned project. Uh, it was abandoned more or less in 2012. You can imagine the kind of mess that we encountered when, when taking it. There was actually a web.xml file in there, and we had to wear protective gloves to remove it. Yep. Yep. But we made it. And so th with a team of Axonic, Pivotal, and Solstiff, we have revived the Axon Trader. We've revamped it with a new very much improved UI. And better, we're deploying that on PCF. So we have the trader application deployed on, on PCF. And the nice thing about PCF is that it allows you to very easily define, to bind services to your application. You just say, this application needs a database. That's fantastic. It needs some form of messaging. So we use RabbitMQ in this case. It's just a couple of clicks or a couple of touches on the keyboard. And we use Spring Cloud Discovery for these instances to discover each other. The Trader app itself is heavily based on, obviously, Spring Boot, no more Web XMLs, and Axon Framework. There are uh, starters in Axon Framework that allow you to get started really easily, really quickly. And basically, you can build an application with zero plumbing at all. Inside the Trader application, there are four domains, users, companies, portfolios, order books. And each of these domains follows the principles of CQRS. Each of them has a command side and a query side. But we needed to evolve this application. We needed to separate one of the instances. So, so what we did is we took the portfolios and the order books part, which is the essential trading engine of the, of the reference application, and started deploying that separately. And again, it just runs on PCF, so you can just scale it up and down. And it's actually quite boring to do. It's so simple. We left all the view models in the Trader app itself uh, for, uh, for simplicity, but also because they are focused on serving information to the UI. So everything that happens in the trading engine is published as an event and is uh, transported to the, uh, to the Trader app. Now, I can talk about it, or I can actually show the uh, the website. So this is a trader application. As you can see from the URL, it's deployed on PCF, uh, on PWS, in fact. So you can, you can go there. You can try it for yourself. Read the explanation on the top right. It contains the references to the documentation, um, all the information you want to know. So Kenny Bastani did an awesome job on writing all the documentation and describing how this reference architecture is put together. And I particularly like his domain diagrams, because the domain, for some of you, might not be a natural uh, domain. So he describes in very detail how all these aspects are, um, are built. So you can scroll down. You can impersonate a user. We have top-notch security. Just make sure you click on your own name. 
<laughs> or whoever you want to impersonate. And as long as everybody does that, there's no problems, right? So you can just impersonate Kenny in this case. And you can go scroll down. You can see what, that he has a lot of money. Um, and um, he might want to buy some, uh, some Axonic shares. So he just plays orders like that. So I invite you to play around for yourself. You can easily deploy this either locally or in a, a free PWS environment, whichever you like. Thank you so Enjoy. much. Enjoy. Thank you, Allard. So try it out. You can go right now to axontrader.cfapps.io. The repo is open for public contribution. Allard's going to be talking more at 1150 about CQRS and Axon. Uh, but we, I just want to thank uh, Mike Kaleno and his team from Solstice, uh, Sampath, Harsha Haridu that worked on the React.js front end, uh, Jakob Pillemon from our evangelist group that helped us code, ja uh, Kenny uh, with the documentation, and a number of other people, Ben Wilcox, some of our other PAs. Uh, I, think, I think you're going to like it. Go check out the repo, and we, we're welcoming contributions. So with that, thank you very much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>